Sadly, it's the end of an era. My beloved Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gel Cream Extra Dry, fragrance-free, has sadly been discontinued. Now, if you have been watching for any number of years, you know this is one of my absolute favorite products. In fact, it was featured in my skincare products I keep buying video from a few years ago because I love it so much. So when I learned they were discontinuing it, I was devastated, heartbroken, but good news, they came out with not one, but two new and we'll say improved because I think they are an improvement facial moisturizers in its place. And in today's video, I'm gonna review those for you because I've been trying them out over the past year. I really like them. We're gonna talk about how they differ, what new ingredients there are in these products in contrast to the old formula. Now, this video is not sponsored, but I am affiliated with Neutrogena and I have done sponsored videos with these products throughout this year. So let's go back to the old Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gel Cream Extra Dry Sensitive Skin. What was it about this that I liked it so much? Why did I keep buying it over and over again. It was a fragrance-free gel cream with hyaluronic acid, a humectant that helps with improving water content in skin's outermost layer. And if you take anything away from this video, say you care nothing about Neutrogena Hydro Boost products, I want you to take away one thing, and that is when it comes to your skin and products that you use, don't underestimate the value of improving the moisture content and skin's outermost layer. That is really a lot of what moisturizers are intended to do, and it really takes the skincare aspect of things to another level when you realize that, because when the moisture content drops in skin's outermost layer, the enzymes there, they don't function optimally. It can slow down the skin's natural exfoliation processes. That's why you get a buildup of dry, rough skin. The barrier becomes impaired you're more likely to lose water from the skin and irritating things are more likely to get in. This can make skin problems flare up like rosacea, acne, eczema, uh, and it also can make you more prone to heal with hyperpigmentation, especially if you have a deeper skin tone. You know, there are a lot of environmental exposures that can make our skin more prone to water loss. For example, during the winter, the humidity drops and we are a lot more vulnerable to dryness, to water loss. Check out my recent video as a side note on winter skincare tips. So it was a hyaluronic acid gel cream. It also had dimethicone and various other silicones, which help to reduce water loss. They are occlusives. In contrast to some other occlusives, which I adore, such as mineral oil and petroleum jelly, silicones are a lot more lightweight in consistency and they don't feel greasy. They allow for good evaporation of sweat. So they are often incorporated into facial moisturizers for that reason. This older formula, Basically, it was like a liquid crystal gel matrix that absorbed really quickly into the skin and it offered sustained improvement in moisture content. Per Neutrogena, they examined, uh, probably through something like corneometry, hydration and skin's outermost layer with this older product. And the product claim was that it was shown to lead to 48 hour hydration, you know, improved moisture content up to 48 hours after use. I loved it. Um, I especially loved it, you know, around the eye area. It had like a plumping effect, smoothing out fine lines and wrinkles, which you can get with most moisturizers because again, when water content is optimized in skin's outermost layer, well, then the through space filling via hydration, fine lines are diminished. It also temporarily improves the appearance of prominent pores. Nothing makes pores and lines on your face more obvious than a dehydrated stratum corneum. Um, lightweight, also wonderful on the neck, smoothing out fine lines and wrinkles. It was fragrance free and it was dye free. Dyes in skincare products for some people can be irritating. It felt very weightless on the skin, it wasn't greasy. So they discontinued it, which you know is a bummer. But what they came out with in its place, I think is actually a significant improvement. They now have two products that are actually quite different from one another and both are quite different from the original. So it's not like they just pumped these out to amplify their portfolio. They're very intentional products and there are differences for which I think different groups of people will find they prefer one over the other. The first, let's talk about their new Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Cream Fragrance free. Um, it has natural moisturizing factors, which is new. The old formula did not have natural moisturizing factors. It has urea, 
It has a variety of amino acids and it also has sodium PCA, humectant that honestly gets ignored. People always talk about hyaluronic acid or glycerin, but people always ignore sodium PCA. PCA stands for pyrrolidone carboxylic acid. So humectant helps improve water content in skin's outermost layer. Another unique feature about this cream in contrast to the original formula is that it now has lipids in it to um, help with the skin barrier. It has ceramides, it has cholesterol, it has free fatty acids, which help to replenish lipids in the outermost layer of the skin, ultimately helping with a dynamic barrier function. So, you know, when it comes to your skin barrier, not only is hydration the name of the game, but also you have to think about it as this dynamic structure. It's not like a fixed thing. It's always, you know, constantly having to adapt to different situations, environmental aggressors, and you know, with age, underlying skin conditions, a lot of that can need a little bit of support. So this product really boosts that dynamic barrier through its skin barrier supporting ingredient profile. So natural moisturizing factors, natural, not like, you know, from a tree, not some kind of hand wavy marketing, but natural moisturizing factors are naturally produced in your skin as hygroscopics to improve water content in skin's outermost layer, because that is, that's really a key aspect of skin physiology is that hydration maintenance in the outermost layer. Um, and applying humectants, natural moisturizing factors to the skin via a moisturizing facial product um, definitely can help to optimize that and boost it, especially when things get slowed down and you have dry, rough skin texture. Now, in contrast to the older formula, which remember was a product that improved moisture content up to 48 hours after application, this one, 72 hours of boosted hydration. So much more sustained in contrast to the old formula. The consistency of this in contrast to the older one, totally different consistencies. They feel different on the skin. Um, they look different. The old one was this hydrogel matrix. This is a lot more, almost feels like a cream lotion. It feels a bit richer. It's not greasy though, and it is fast absorbing. And you feel a, a sensory experience almost as if your skin is being flooded with hydration. Johnson & Johnson tested this moisturizer on uh, patients who had sensitivity, sensitive skin, which, you know, oftentimes can be a bit of a vague and nebulous concept, but sensitivity includes symptoms of burning, stinging. Uh, maybe you get red easily. Maybe your skin itches with products uh, applied to the skin. For people with sensitive skin, you know, certain products can really aggravate their skin. But patients who had clinically sensitive skin, when they used this product, after four weeks, they showed a 38% overall improvement in skin's appearance. They looked at things like the appearance of visual smoothness, so they had smoother skin. They had an improvement in skin radiance. They had an improvement in tactile softness. They touched their face, it's a lot softer. Pore size appeared diminished. And just an overall improvement in clarity and skin's overall appearance. And the product is intended to really boost barrier function and moisture content in the skin. So it's a great option for people who have skin conditions like rosacea, like eczema, um, who have at, at, at its root, they have an impaired skin barrier. Irritating stuff gets in and can aggravate the condition. So a basic moisturizer with ingredients that help support barrier function and boost that, that's really a great option. This is also a great option if you have um, mature skin and you've found that, especially in women, you know, um, with, with age, with menopause, estrogen levels decline, our skin is less uh, robust at retaining moisture and become a lot more sensitive to things coming in contact with the skin, much more prone to dryness. Check out yesterday's video all about um, estrogen and its role in the skin. I, you know, go into detail there, but you know, you might find that with age, you start to need richer moisturizers, and this would be a great option. So I really like it. I actually prefer it to the old formula in that it offers ingredients that really support the needs of the barrier. I think it is a, I think it's an upgrade. But then we have the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Gel Fragrance Free. Yeah, you know, this is, this is something I'll point out right now. You've got to read the package really carefully because as you can see, the jars, you know, from a side glance, 
they look identical. And then you, you look really carefully and you see water cream, water gel. So they're totally different products, okay? The water cream versus the water gel, entirely different products, very, very different. So the water gel, it has, again, hyaluronic acid. That's, that's the core of the Hydro Boost line, boosting moisture content through water retention, improving the water content. It also has natural moisturizing factors, just like the cream. It has urea, sodium lactate, a variety of amino acids. It has trehalose, which is also a humectant. In contrast to the claims made around the water cream, this product, the gel, they claim 48 hour hydration. So a little bit different, you know, the water cream, 72 hours of hydration. So this difference, you know, it may be subtle, but if you're someone who really is dealing with dry, dehydrated, irritated skin, uh, a lot of dryness, you may find that you get a little bit more bang for your buck out of the water cream. Whereas if you're someone who maybe wants something that is a little bit more lightweight, you might prefer the water gel. Um, the water gel is in terms of texture and comparison to the cream, that's really a, a big difference right there. The water gel is a lot more lightweight, thinner in consistency. It almost feels a bit like a serum. It absorbs super fast. People who have acne prone skin, they need to use moisturizer. They have an impaired skin barrier and acne treatments they are drying and irritating, and research supports the use of moisturizers in patients with acne for helping them to tolerate the acne treatments better so the treatments can work better. Treatments only work so long as you use them. Patients have an easier time tolerating the treatments if they are consistently moisturizing their skin. It helps minimize dryness and irritation. It's gentle, it's well tolerated in, in acne patients un, who are undergoing over-the-counter or prescription treatments, like Epiduo, for example, which is a combination of adapalene and benzoyl peroxide. It can be drying. It can be irritating. We encourage patients to use a moisturizer. But in acne patients specifically, they showed an overall improvement in the appearance of the skin by 33% at four weeks after using. Um, again, looking at visual smoothness, overall skin radiance, clarity, uh, pore size diminished, tactile softness improved. So overall, you know, an improvement. In contrast to the cream, the gel does not have the epidermal lipids. It doesn't have ceramide or cholesterol or free fatty acids. Um, but you know, it still is a great option for improving moisture content in the skin, which ultimately, you know, will help barrier function overall. Uh, you just aren't getting those ingredients. So myself personally, I love both of these and I've used both of these multiple times. You know, originally I was gifted these by Neutrogena uh, to try out before they even launched. So I've been trying them out and using them myself for a while behind the scenes. Um, and I have since repurchased them myself because I do think they are really good. And I'm very excited about them overall. You know, like I said, I was saddened to hear they were discontinuing the old one, but these two new ones, they're so good that, you know, it's like, I'm glad to see the I'm glad to see the change. And I find that for myself personally, I really like to use the water gel in the morning as a facial moisturizer, either after cleansing or just, you know, wake up, put it on. It's great on the neck. And then because it absorbs so quickly, um, it's easy to put my sunscreen on over it. Whereas I really like using the water cream at night as a PM facial moisturizer. Uh, because, you know, I've mentioned this before, but at night, especially when we're asleep, the skin is a lot more prone to losing water. There are certain things that happen in your skin that are influenced by your circadian rhythm. So at night, you know, certain processes are occurring in the skin to repair, to heal, to recover. You have an increase in blood flow to the skin. And with that, you know, you get an increase in water loss. This is one of the reasons why a lot of people wake up and they feel like their skin looks dull, dry, dehydrated. Applying a facial moisturizer at night helps reduce some of that water loss, keeping skin's outermost barrier hydrated, optimizing water content. I found that this, uh, the, the water cream makes for a great night cream. And with the epidermal lipids in the water cream, you get the barrier supporting aspect that I really find to be beneficial. But both of these are great. I'm able to use these no problem around my eyes. I do appreciate with both products, a hydrating and plumping effect that smooths out little fine lines around the eyes. And and I also find that it uh, helps to just boost overall radiance through the improved moisture content with either product. 
And good news for those of you who are sensitive to niacinamide and cannot seem to escape it in your skincare, neither of these products has niacinamide. I personally think these are an upgrade in comparison to the old formula. I actually prefer the consistencies of both. The textures of both, I think, are a little bit more elegant. Not to say that the older formula was not, but you definitely can see that they tweaked it a bit to improve upon not only the ingredient profile and the performance of the product, but also the aesthetics and the texture. Just like the old water cream, you get 1.7 ounces of product, although the newer jars look a lot smaller. Um, it's a glass jar, whereas the older one was like this kind of thicker, I want to say plastic. All in all, these are great. Like, um, you know, it's kind of going to boil down to a matter of personal preference and what you like. I would say if you're someone who has really oily skin and you find that many moisturizers just feel too greasy or oily, you're worried that they might aggravate your acne, try the water gel. Not to say that that's a guarantee that it will work perfectly for everyone out there with acne prone skin, because again, what aggravates acne can be very different from person to person, but that might be a good place to start. Whereas if you have more mature skin, dry skin, atopic dermatitis, eczema, problem with the barrier, you might find that you want something a little bit richer, in which case you might wanna try the water cream. I wanted to make this video for you guys for a few reasons. First of all, to clue you into the fact that the older formula has completely been discontinued because I don't think it, you know, maybe it was as obvious to some people. I actually got some comments here and there like, hey, I can't find the Hydro Boost uh, gel cream anymore, the extra dry one you've always recommended. Or I got, I got what I thought was that, but I actually got this water cream. I didn't realize it was something new and it feels a little different. So I wanted to make this video A, you know, to make you aware and B, to really highlight and discuss how the new formulas are different from the old, what they have to offer, what the ingredients are that are different and, you know, what they do and, you know, kind of what skin types might prefer one over the other. Let me know in the comments, have you tried these? If so, what do you think? Do you like them better than the old formula or do you miss the old formula? If you haven't tried them, one thing I noticed um, from Walmart actually is Walmart is selling half ounce jars of these new products because if you don't like it for whatever reason or you find that it's just not like your favorite thing, better to only have bought half an ounce, paid less money and have less product to go through than, you know, to have the large jar. That way, you know, you can kind of maybe test both of them out and, you know, a more doable way in that regard. And then you can choose the one that you actually like and stick with that moving forward. Let me know though, what you guys think of these new formulas. If you have tried them, I'm really curious to know your thoughts and opinions. I love this whole Hydro Boost line. And in my opinion, it just keeps getting better and better. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. On the end slate, I'm going to link my recent video all about estrogen cream for the face. Watch that one next if you are at all interested in the role of estrogens in skin health. Um, but if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.